Ever wondered why some countries, despite gaining independence, still seem to be under the influence of their former colonizers? This intriguing phenomenon is often attributed to an intricate concept known as neocolonialism. In the unfolding post-colonial world, neocolonialism plays a significant role, subtly yet powerfully shaping the destinies of nations. We'll delve into key terms and concepts such as economic exploitation, political interference, and cultural hegemony, which are instrumental in maintaining this form of control. Neocolonialism, a subtle yet potent form of control, might just be the answer. So what exactly is neocolonialism? At its core, neocolonialism is the practice of using capitalism, globalization, and cultural imperialism to influence a country in lieu of direct military or political control. It's essentially the modern form of colonialism, a kind of power dynamic that persists even after a nation has achieved independence. Neocolonialism represents the economic, political, and cultural influence exerted by former colonial powers over newly independent countries. But it's crucial to understand how it differs from traditional colonialism. Traditional colonialism was largely about direct control, about planting a flag and exerting dominance over a territory and its people. Neo-colonialism, on the other hand, is a more subtle beast. It's about influence and control, yes, but it operates in the shadows, behind the scenes. It's about economic leverage, political manipulation, and cultural dominance. Unlike traditional colonialism, which was visible and territorial, neo-colonialism operates behind a facade of independence. Now that we know what neo-colonialism is, let's delve into how it actually works. Neo-colonialism employs a triad of strategies, the first being economic exploitation. This involves the use of financial muscle by former colonial powers to control the resources and markets of newly independent countries. It's like a puppeteer pulling strings, but instead of marionettes, we're talking about entire economies. Debt bondage, unequal trade relationships, and exploitation of natural resources are just some of the tools in their arsenal. The second method is political interference. This can be as overt as supporting puppet governments or as subtle as manipulating international institutions. Imagine a game of chess where one player has the power to change the rules mid-game. That's the kind of control we're talking about. Last, but by no means least, is cultural hegemony. This is where the former colonial powers impose their own cultural norms and values onto the newly independent nations, eroding indigenous practices and traditions. It's akin to painting over a beautiful mural with a single monotonous shade of gray. Let's bring these concepts to life with some examples. Consider how uh, Western fashion and food industries have infiltrated markets globally, or how international debt continues to cripple economies of developing nations. These methods, though varied, all serve one purpose, maintaining the dominance of the former colonial powers. But what does this mean for the countries under the grip of neo-colonialism? Well, the impacts are vast and varied, deeply ingrained in the economic, political, and social fabric of nations. Economically, neocolonialism often leads to resource exploitation and uneven trade relationships. Imagine a country rich in minerals, but its people languish in poverty because the wealth is siphoned off by foreign corporations. Sounds unfair, right? Politically, neo-colonial powers can manipulate governance 
sometimes propping up puppet regimes that prioritize foreign interests over their people's welfare. This breeds instability and hampers genuine democracy. Socially, the imposition of foreign culture can erode indigenous practices and identities. Picture a world where everyone dresses, speaks, or even thinks the same way. A world where diversity, the very essence of humanity, is lost. Case studies abound, from Africa's mineral-rich nations to the politically turbulent regions of Latin America, bearing witness to these impacts. Neo-colonialism thus continues to shape the destiny of nations long after the end of formal colonial rule. To sum it all up, neocolonialism represents the invisible chains binding post-colonial nations through economic exploitation, political interference, and cultural hegemony. We've seen how former colonial powers continue to assert control using subtle methods to influence the resources, politics, and cultures of newly independent nations. From debt bondage to puppet governments, from exploitation of natural resources to the imposition of Western norms, the tools of neocolonialism are varied and widespread. Understanding neocolonialism is a critical step towards achieving global justice and equality. The chains may be invisible, but the effects are real.